In this video, I'm going to solder together the tiny snowflake. And this kit is white, but it comes in a lot of different colors of LEDs. So when you open the package, there's a PCB, LEDs, resistors, capacitors, an ATtiny13A, and some spare LEDs. So the first thing we solder is the LEDs. We actually start by taking a small amount of solder and putting it on one of the pads. And in this case, I'm actually putting them all on the same side. If you look at each one of these um, LED spots, there's a T in the middle, and I'm putting it on the top part of the T. Oh, and I missed one. Okay. So now that they're all pretend, we open the LED package. make a small pile of these. And on the back of each one of these LEDs, there's a T. And you have to make sure that the symbol on this side matches the symbol on that side. So to do that, I take one that's upside down, I flip it over and look at it, and then if it's the right orientation, I just re-solder it. I just solder it onto the PCB. And it's a lot easier if you do the LEDs first because the PCB lies flat. Um, you should always try and keep your PCB flat if you can because it just makes soldering components a lot easier. If you do it the other way, um, to the back side first, it will work. It's just the um, microcontroller sticks out of the board further than the resistors. So it's harder to solder the LEDs at that point. And I'm just checking every LED that I put on there. And if they aren't in the right order or in the right direction, then I just set them back down. And I work with those later.
These tweezers are a bit sticky because they have a lot of flux on them from soldering stuff. I need to coat them in isopropanol or wipe them off with isopropanol and it'll come right off. Okay, and then when you have only ones that are in the wrong direction, I just pick them up with my finger and drop them. And about half of them are usually the correct side up then. And occasionally you lose an LED. That's okay. That's why there's extras of everything in the kit. Well, except the microcontroller. I'm going to clean my soldering iron. It's a little bit dirty. And there's one of them that flew off screen. So once we have all the LEDs on the board, we need to solder the other side. But first I like to check to make sure that the LEDs are in a good place because this is the easiest time to move them if there's a problem. And this one is sticking up out of the board a little bit. So I'm just gonna carefully grab him with my tweezers. Actually, I'm just gonna push on him a little bit and melt this so that he lies flat. Okay, 
the rest seem okay. So just go ahead and square the other side of all of them. I'm just going to touch up the solder now that both sides are soldered to make it look pretty. And this just ensures a good electrical connection on the PCB. Now that we have the LEDs done, we do the other side. The first thing I like to do is the capacitor because it's hard to get on once you have the microcontroller on. There's two of these, but we only use one. So just like with the LEDs, I start by putting solder on one pad. And there's no orientation on a capacitor, so just needs to bridge those two pads. Okay. Then I do the microcontroller. The microcontroller does have an orientation and this is very important because basically this is the only component that if you put it in backwards it actually does harm. So if you look very carefully at the microcontroller, there's on this one there's a notch up here. Sometimes there's a notch at the top, but basically this notch always has to go up on this PCB. So it goes towards the reset pin like this. But just like with everything else, we start by putting a little bit of solder on one pad and then we reliquify that solder while holding the component in place and use it to push it down.
and then I just optically check to make sure that all of these pins are touching this pad or at least are very close to it because if it's at an angle to the board it's very hard to solder them together. And then I start usually with the opposite corners. And then I do the middle ones. I'm going to check it just to make sure that I did a good job of soldering everything. And it looks like there's solder on this pad, but it's not going to that pin. So I'm just going to touch it up. And I'll actually do that for all of them just to make sure the connection is very good. can go ahead and do the resistors. And there's five resistors. And resistors don't have an orientation either, just like the capacitors. Um, I like to put them with the number side up, but the electrons don't care. Um, I just find it easier if the numbers are pointing upwards in case I want to change the value later, then I can actually see what value I had on there. If you leave them white side up, then you have no idea. You have to unslaughter one and check. Resistors also have the tendency to get dropped in places and then you find them months later when you're doing a project and if you solder the wrong size on a project, it's easier if you can check that immediately. And I'm going to try and fix this resistor because it's not at the greatest angle. And same with this one. Okay. And then I check them to make sure they're not tombstoning. And they're okay. So. I just go ahead and add more solder. And 
Now I'm just touching these up, make sure there's a good contact, and removing some of the excess solder. thing to do is to connect the power and to do that I have a USB cable that I've already removed the other side of and take my wire strippers Remove some of the wire sheath. I'm going to trim this a little bit because it didn't do a clean cut. And then we need a ground, which is the black one, and we need the red one, which is VCC. And it's having trouble working right now. That's strange. So I'm going to do it this way. And I got off part of the wire, so I'll try it again. Okay. And I need to redo this one because I want them the same length. And since we don't need this green wire or this white wire, I'm going to just trim them off down here. And I'm going to trim off this ground a little bit. And then pre-tin these. And pre-tinning these wires a little bit just so they stick better. That didn't really work as well. Okay. Put the red wire to 5 volts. This is very important not to get this backward because it will ruin your microcontroller. And then we put ground. Ground to ground. And 
So it looks like this, and then we plug it in. Just checking that we got ground in the right place, VCC in the right place before we plug this in, because we don't want to ruin our PCB. When we plug it in, the first thing that happens is that all the LEDs turn on and they slowly fade. And then they will randomly start blinking. And since all of them are blinking, we know that we soldered everything correctly.